the Victorian era was a hotbed of inventions for innovative products, giving us photography, steam trains and the first public flush toilet. But there were also often dangerous chemicals used and people were almost continuously exposed to risks of an accidental demise. Here are seven ways you could meet your end through mundane and misadventure in Victorian times. Number seven, wallpaper. With the ending of the window tax and introduction of gaslighting, Victorians were able to indulge their love of colour. With sunlight streaming in by day and lit up rooms at night, a particularly vibrant shade of green called Shields Green became fashionable. The uplifting colour was extensively used in wallpapers and as a bonus, resisted fading. Dark side of the bright interiors created was that the wallpapers gradually poisoned people. Its rich pigment came from copper arsenide, an arsenic derivative, which was deadly to anyone breathing air polluted with the fumes it released. Children were especially at risk, while whole families were known to have sickened and died. The symptoms of arsenic poisoning resembled diphtheria, so many politicians were unconvinced of the connection. Any doctors who voiced concern about arsenic poisoning would be publicly ridiculed, especially by the wallpaper manufacturers. It was not until 1903 that arsenic compounds were banned as a food additive, but the use of arsenic and wallpaper has never been legally prohibited. Number six, baby bottles. Baby bottles were in use in Victorian times, but a newfangled device made feeding even easier. It was a customized glass bottle with rubber tubing and a teat attached, which enabled the infant to actively suck their milk as if through a straw. These devices were promoted by aggressive advertising with brand descriptions like the little cherub or the princess. They became a popular accessory for modern Victorian mothers who loved how their baby could feed themselves. But a dangerous design flaw posed a huge risk. The rubber tubing and bottle were impossible to separate and clean. The repeated circulating of warm milk made the device the ideal breeding ground for bacteria. Guidance given by Mrs. Beaton, the housekeeping guru of the day, was also faulty. In 1861, she wrote that it was only necessary to clean the bottles every two to three weeks. With babies drinking a mixture of bacteria several times a day, often with deadly consequences, the devices were soon popularly dubbed murder bottles. However, the persuasive marketing campaign proved even more powerful than their condemnation by doctors, with many mothers continuing their use regardless. Number five, lead. The Industrial Revolution created sprawling cities which required the organized provision of fresh water to households. Reservoirs were constructed to supply water to stamp pipe outlets in poorer areas and houses in more affluent neighborhoods. Unfortunately, most of the pipe water was conveyed through lead channels, carrying particles of the toxic element with it. In fact, the modern term plumbing is derived from the Latin word for lead, plumbum. Even more ironic was the passing of laws by the British government in 1847 and 1848 which made it a criminal offence to contaminate drinking water. Unfortunately, the risks were not confined to water. Lead was used as a component of paint to prevent it from flaking and also create brighter colours. Victorian manufacturers coated everything from furniture to children's toys with the vibrant lead paint so that when children sucked toys or chewed on their cots, they were accidentally imbibing poison. Number four, laudanum. Laudanum was as widely used as aspirin is now. It was seen as a cure or panacea that calmed nerves, relieved pain and aided sleep. It was available for sale from every pharmacy and cheap to buy at around 25 drops for one penny. This, however, was problematic in that laudanum is a syrup of opium and therefore addictive. Laudanum was widely promoted to women to treat afflictions such as menstrual cramps and what was called hysteria. Ironically, laudanum may also have taken to ease symptoms of arsenic poisoning from green wallpaper. Rich and poor were affected by the popular medication, with people becoming dependent on the feelings of euphoria it evoked and taking increasing doses. 
While the upper classes derided the poor as laudanum addicts, they were oblivious to their own habits and happily partook of the addictive cordial. For those aware enough, their only alternative was to attempt withdrawal, with the unpleasant symptoms of tremors, hallucinations and sweats. With the drug unregulated and freely available, overdoses were common. Number three, bread. The Victorians saw appearances as all important, tending to link the colour white to purity and high quality. Accordingly, they viewed white bread as pure and nutritional, with all the coarse wheat germ and bran having been removed. By some bizarre logic, the addition of chemical whitener alum improved it even more in their eyes. The chemical compounds described as alum are double sulfate salts of metals like aluminium or chromium. Sadly, alum has no nutritional value and its addition to bread deprived poor people for whom bread was a dietary staple. The alum in bread caused malnutrition and contributed to various deficiency related illnesses. Even worse, it is now known to irritate the bowel wall and cause long-term digestive disorders. In small children, its effects could be devastating and fatal. Number two, boracic acid in milk. Boracic acid is in a group of mild acids which today are mainly found in insecticides. However, again we find the populist mentor of homemakers, Mrs. Beaton, providing dubious advice. Before the invention of pasteurization and fridges, milk could harbor dangerous bacteria and quickly turn bad. To counteract this, Mrs. Beaton suggested adding boracic acid to milk to act as a preservative. It would also have the effect of freshening the flavor slightly and sweetening any sour or spoiled taste. However, the chemical simply disguised the taste of off milk, meaning that many people thought they could drink or feed their children what really wasn't fit for human consumption. The consequences of this could be dire. The effects of boracic acid on adults are usually mild symptoms of nausea, stomach cramps and diarrhea. However, in children, it can cause seizures, neurological disease and even death. In the very group most likely to be fed large quantities of milk. Number one, candles. At the start of the 19th century, candles were made from either tallow or beeswax. Tallow flickered with a sooty flame and had an unpleasant odour, but was much cheaper. However, in 1810, a French scientist called Michael Chevrel developed a new process for making affordable candles without smoke or odours. He discovered a way of separating the fats in tallow and added a secret ingredient to achieve this. Although banned in his homeland France, these compound candles were hugely successful in England with sales peaking in 1835 and 1836. However, one evening, a Professor Everett was working late using the light of his new candle when he detected a garlic smell coming from the molten wax. The professor of chemistry became suspicious as he knew that arsenic compounds emit a garlic-like odour. Theorising that the secret ingredient was arsenic, he conducted tests which confirmed his suspicion. He then published his ominous findings in the Lancet Science Journal, dubbing the new products corpse candles because of their lethal fumes.